All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Comic Book Radio. I am your host, Pete Zametti. Hope you guys are doing good out there. This is episode 24 of Comic Book Radio. We're going to be talking about FundMyComic.com, which is a crowdfunding comic book platform. It's relatively new. It's been out there for a little while, but it's still relatively new compared to Indiegogo, Kickstarter, etc. Uh, I'm here with guest Luke Stone, who I believe is the founder and creator of Fund My Comic, but I don't need to guess because he's right here. So Hello. Luke, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Is that correct? Are you the creator founder of Fund My Comic? I, I am, yes. So I uh, had the idea, oh, um, January, February 2022 and um yeah awesome um well i'm gonna be picking your brain tonight and if anybody in the chat has questions as well for luke please feel free to join uh luke how much time do you have with us tonight as much time as you uh as you have okay great so yeah. what we're gonna do is i'm gonna talk to you for a half hour uh, then we're going to take a, a very, very quick break, and then we're going to continue with the second half of the show. At the second half of the show, I'm going to put a link into the chat. So if people want to join one by one to ask a question to Luke that maybe we didn't get a chance to cover, feel free to do so. But at that time, there's going to be a link that goes live in the chat, so be ready for it. Uh, but right now, the first half hour is all mine. Uh, so, uh, so Luke why why this this is this is a tremendous endeavor uh you know it really is uh i think i think i, I might have gone a little nuts uh you know i just might be a little insane <laughs> i like that i like that because that's how i feel about uh, when i think back about why did i start a publishing company <laughs> right yeah um i think it's you know i think that's really the only thing that that i can attribute it to is maybe a uh, momentary insanity um and so you seem like well, a rather sane individual you know uh, well yeah i i think i am i try to be anyway what, what had occurred that that gave you that spark that 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 motivation to to do all this well you know i i got sick in 2021 i was in the hospital for five months when i when i got out i actually i kind of in this little bit of a coma some people might know about when i when i woke up and was finally able to start seeing tv again it felt like i woke up and kind of some bizarro alternate reality and uh it was um it was kind of jarring you know i'd heard about uh people having their money held from crowdfunding platforms trust and safety getting involved people getting outright shut down and 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 having their money refunded and people getting banned and then the shadow banning thing going on and it just it was kind of nuts and I thought, you know, I, I, I think I need to have an alternative for myself. I, um, you know, prior to getting sick, I was a full-time pastor and we knew uh, where I was at in Florida, we knew there was some legislation coming that if you were to kind of say or, or, or kind of preach anything that was a, a biblical representation of, of um, marriage and sexuality then you could potentially be charged with a hate crime and um, be put in jail and lose your tax exempt status. And so we had a very brief meeting about that, that, hey, they're trying to push this legislation. And uh, if they do, this is, you know, this is what'll happen. And it was like, I think five minutes, we moved on to the next piece of business. They're like, well, I guess we just bail you out and we have to pay taxes. Big deal, right? <laughs> so. I kind of knew that was in the works prior to getting sick. But then when I woke up, I saw like kind of the whole world going to crap. And I just wanted to have something for myself. And so I started looking into the other options that were out there. You know, obviously there's, you know, WordPress sites that can do it. Shopify and things like that. I get a little nervous with anything that's in a fi on the end mm -hmm. because, you know, there's usually organizations and corporations behind that. I also didn't really like the, uh, I didn't feel like I had the tools to make a WordPress site very secure especially if you're going to have multiple people using it. 
Um, at first, it was just going to be for myself, but I really wanted to be uncancelable. So I was like, well, I don't want anybody to shut me down, you know, because um, I'm not really a, a coder or anything like that. So I, I kind of weighed everything, and finally I said, that, ah, this is all just garbage. I can't do any of this. And I started looking at uh, development companies to come and build me something, and I found this one, uh, a couple of them actually, there's probably four or five out there, that will build uh, infrastructures for you that are um, uh, for crowdfunding. Uh, they'll build the infrastructure for you, and, and you attach your, your site to it, right? And you just tell them what you want, and obviously you've got to pay them, you know? But you tell them what they want and they, you know, bake your cake for you, so to speak. And uh, I figured that was the way to go because I'm a comic book artist. I'm a writer. You know, that's what I do. I, you know, I'm an, I'm an, I'm an ink slinger. I don't... Did, did, were, did you manage to vet these individuals? They're fine. You trust them? I did. Yeah. Yeah. I, I went through and looked at a lot of stuff that they do and um, talked with them. In fact, what, what wound up happening is I started out working with them and then another company came along and said, hey, we can do everything that they're doing for you, but we can do it better. And they said, all we need is, you know, you know, all this. And they, so we decided, well, let's try them out. And um, they wound up missing a deadline. As soon as they missed that first deadline, I went back to the other guys and said, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, Please that's forgive like, me. I'm I always leery to, of that. I, I don't I mean to cut you <laughs> off right now, but anytime someone approaches me, I could do it the best. I can elevate your project. I can, it's better than anyone I'd else. I never it, trust them. It never works out. <laughs> never works. And I kind of knew that, that that it wasn't, but I, the other company said, yeah, you can come back anytime. I said, all right, well, we'll check it out, you know. And so as soon as they did, I came back. I said, hey, um, all right, we want to do this. And we, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in my life had to move across country and some stuff. And, you know, we'd been waiting on this other company to kind of come through for us and they weren't doing it. We really liked the guy that was in charge, but I just don't think he was, he had the tools. He kind of oversold what he was capable of doing. Um, so we wound up, you know, once we got settled, once I got settled in my new place, uh, we started, we'd already kind of started working with them. I have a partner that came on board named Todd Oltman's and, so he and I kind of put our money together for this. And I'm sorry and, if you already said this, but what year, what time frame is this? Well, we started all this in February of 2022. And okay. so by the time we'd gotten things really worked out and developed and lawyers and terms of service infrastructure and all that kind of stuff worked out, all the, like the easy part was building the website really with these guys on board, right? With this other development company we hired the hard part was making sure it was legal and and the accounting was right to handle everybody's money so we had to set up for stripe yeah because sure it's all these not things. just a simple website of for yourself it's, handling it's not very very private pertinent information yeah. Yeah, and we the last to thing sure you want that like was a, right. Yeah, yeah, the last thing you want is like a site hack or a breach right. or anything like that coming along. Yeah, and we decided to go with these developers because they were their code was proprietary, like no one knows it but them, and so they're like really anal about security and protection, because if they lose that code, they lose their livelihood. Like that's their whole business is predicated on their wow. ones and zeros, basically. You know, and I said that's good because. Um, the kind of campaigns we're going to be housing on here are going to have people that probably aren't going to like us. And so we want, we want a website that's well protected. And so, uh, they, I mean, they fit the bill. They were, they've been great to work with too. Um, they're very collaborative on this site, you know, letting us know, like when I have a, an idea, maybe I don't have a fully formed idea of how I want it to, to function. They're really good at telling me like, yes, that's possible. No, that's not possible. You know, with, within some, some restraints or whatever. But for the most part, they really try to make everything happen for me. And wow. uh, yeah, so we started doing that. So that was a year ago. And so we had anticipated a launch in January of 2023. Didn't happen. We wound up moving back and getting things ready. Finally in March, actually three months ago, uh, 90 days ago, this last Friday, was our three month anniversary of being live to the public. So we were open for a while in test mode where we had a few people come on and we were kind of testing the, um, uh, the strength of the site, the, the traffic of the site. And we just rolled out slowly uh, to try to really test all the different elements of, of what we had. And we, 
you know started adding additional additional features um you know that we wanted to the company that we have they you know anybody could go there and basically rent their infrastructure and be great for you know a couple people to use but um there was a lot of kind of custom stuff we wanted you know well we todd kind of goes along with it because he knows i've got like this like i feel like the jack black of the band i've got vision out the at the rear so just go with it and so um he kind of knew what i wanted and he's like all right let's you know let's, let's get her let's get her done you know let's make it happen and so we really just kind of started ramping things up you know build out this piece of code for me i want the website to do this i want it to do that and we're still doing that there's a whole were you we're trying to build. modeling it at all after any of the other crowdfunding platforms only a little bit only a little bit i wanted some things that were familiar uh to what i had used from indiegogo and kickstarter but i really wanted it to be its own thing i wanted it to function the way that i wanted it to function you know as far as how i would the tools that i would need for it to work you know along the way and um which we're still building out the kind of the fulfillment aspect of it because eventually i want to have everything be able to be done from the dashboard including weight-based shipping and all that kind of stuff but that's oh wow well. yeah i mean we're talking that's probably a year year and a half away uh in development um the some of the stuff i'm asking for is i mean it's weeks worth of work to make happen and that's them working eight hours a day Oh, on, my, on just my website so what would what would you say in terms of distinction between the other crowdfunding platform sites and i'm going to stick mostly to just indiegogo and kickstarter here sure, yeah. uh, there's others but that's primarily what people use what they're comfortable with what they're used to and what they even just know um what would you say makes yours distinctive compared to theirs and you don't need to go on and, and list you know 20 things or something but maybe right. even just a top three okay well first first one uh, is that our platform fee is 3% versus 5 so we automatically try to lower the price there um, out, outside of that you're going to notice a, a a big difference in one of the features we have we have a widget where people can actually embed their campaign into their own website page so they can go directly to their website uh, backers can go there and never leave like they're they're on you know petersometti.com and they're backing the project and it's we're doing all the heavy lifting through our back end and it's right there on your website so we were able to do that uh, we also have extreme flexibility when it comes to we still offer the three different types of types of campaigns um, a fixed goal is what we call a an all or nothing and a, a flexible goal we call to keep it all and then we have the in demand which would be a continuous now you can run a continuous without having without having ran a campaign anywhere else before. You know, let's just say you, you've you already been selling your book from your site, but you'd like to feature it here, you can run it there. Uh, we do, um, but we we have a, a lot of flexibility when it comes to lengths of campaigns, how you can um, set your funding, and you know, even if you know there's something along the way where you need to adjust your funding, then you know, we can, we can adapt with that. And then we've got in-person customer service. Like that's, I've actually got tech people that work on my side of things. So we have our admins and then I have the admins from the developers. And so we're in constant contact between the two, the two entities and it's very symbiotic. So it's great. That's oh great. yeah. 2%, 2% platform fee this month. Yeah. Yeah. You got Hojo in there in the chat yeah. helping you promote. And uh, a lot of people in here saying very kind things about Fund My Comic, especially, uh, I'm guessing these are also people who have run projects on there too. Uh, so in terms of, of, of everything, you've got this site, you've got this crowdfunding platform now, you, you're throwing your hat in the ring and it's, it's relatively specialized. So you don't just do comics, right? But it, it's comic related. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. I wanted it to be like a virtual storefront for kind of like a local comic book shop, what it would be, the things you would find there you'll find on this website. So, yeah. so are you coming up against any hurdles in terms of, of you're, you're getting any kind of, uh, I mean, because I know you want this to be relatively a, 
uh, a pro freedom of speech, pre freedom of expression kind of platform. Um, some of these other platforms have sometimes not really been that way. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, even at Alterna, we experienced a situation where a campaign, the last campaign that we had on Indiegogo, uh, it, it ran the full course of it, it, it fulfilled, um, well, it funded. And then I get an email the next day saying that we have an image on there that's too graphic and needs to be taken care of, otherwise they won't release our funds. And so at that point, it really got me thinking about a lot of different things. And we really have to start uh, transitioning away from Indiegogo if we can help it. If not, mm -hmm. um, and we have it on our own site too now when we, when we do any kind of campaign, pre-order, crowdfunding, whatever it may be. Um, but for you, where you're running something and you have to be the person who vets these projects as well, have you run across anything where someone seems to be pushing the boundaries of what you would consider acceptable? um every day <laughs> and i think that's where our uh where our uh, campaign criteria comes in um you know i i will point them back to that and then we have our um our admins in fact there was just one the, uh, today i had to send back i said all right you know what this is all fine except for you know we want to keep these safe for work that's the that's the rule we have if it's going to make a blue hair grandma upset, then, you know, maybe we don't, maybe we don't do it. So we limit the use of the F word, you know, cause that's a, a pretty So you have actual grandmas on site to vet well, we, these we, projects. We, we don't, we don't, but we, uh, we have all of our admins pretend their grandma's in their ear. So that's kind of, kind of one of the, one of the things <laughs> we do. It's like, just imagine your grandmother there, but no, we do. Um, so, you know, we, we will let them know, like, all right, this needs to be, you know, this needs to be censored in some way. And it's not that we're trying to not allow them to make what they want. We want them to make and have inside the book whatever they want. It's it's really having some public decency, you know, to have, a, have it up on this platform. Because we have uh, one thing that's really different from what the other platforms do is once a campaign is approved, if anyone complains, we're like, well, it, it got approved. So it's okay. It's not illegal. It's good to go. We just kind of send those complaints walking, right? But let's say, for instance, you know, we approve a campaign. If someone wants to try to go in and fudge it and, and change edit, edit the campaign without us knowing, it doesn't work that way. So as soon as you edit the body, you can edit your rewards all day. But if you edit your the body of the campaign, it flags it back for approval for us. So so that we can make sure that it's the campaign is being vetted before it goes out. And uh, we do that, we do that so that we can maintain that policy that if someone comes to complain, look, it made it through our campaign criteria. They're not breaking our toss. It's they're above board on everything. If you're offended, just find another book to buy. It's not that big a deal. Yeah, and that's the thing too is, is creative people as much as I love them, they can be habitual line steppers, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so always trying to push the envelope in some way, shape, or form. So mm -hmm. it, it is, it is going to be sometimes a bit harrowing in terms of, and I don't know if you've dealt with something already or, or not, but in terms of dealing with not only maybe a project creator, but also someone coming at you saying, hey, this is, you know, it needs to come down uh, and do something about this and X, Y, or Z, I'm offended and, and whatever it may be. Yeah, I think the um, only one we had trouble with was ma'am, I am. And not for yeah, the trans yeah. thing. It was because people thought that it was AI written because the writer started it out as a joke. He created a, you know, a, a, a hoax chat gpt wrote this for me or whatever and people thought that was real and you'd be surprised how many people don't do their their research on those things and so i actually got a lot of complaints that well you let ai on the platform i'm like no no it's not ai that was really the only thing we've got complaints about would you most let of people AI that are complaining are just platform? talking about us somewhere else would you would get I? would no. you let a so you wouldn't not let an ai not knowingly no Interesting. Yeah, that that's that's how I feel in terms of publishing as well. I don't care what anyone does with their AI stuff. If they yeah. they can create AI all day, if they can sell it, you know, hey, that's that's their thing. Well, um, you don't need but, it to be funded if it's done with AI. It's free. Yeah, yeah, and I don't necessarily right. yeah. uh, feel like 
the publishing audience that I have that's going to want to purchase comics wants to purchase an AI drawn or written yeah. comic. Um, and I personally don't want to purse, purchase one. Um, but yeah, you do bring up a good point with that. Now, uh, you do have this crowdfunding platform up. So have you seen, how can I word this without making it sound too derogatory because I am using Indiegogo right now? <laughs> That's fine. Go for it, buddy. <laughs> have you seen? Have you seen any of the? I'll say any of the crowdfunding platforms out there. Have you seen any of them kind of knocking at your doorstep and saying, "You're like, you know, what? What a great crowdfunding platform you have there. I hope nothing happens to it." No, no, I don't actually think that we're on their radar. Comics and games are maybe five to ten percent of the green site and the pink sites uh, audience. The, what they do over there. Uh, so it is not very much at all, and so I don't think they really care about us, and they know that none of the hardcore liberal books are out there. Anyone with the pronouns in their uh, in their bios are really jumping, are really you know chomping at the bit to come save two percent over on our platform. They're pretty happy in those other places. In fact, most of those people are over on either Crowdfunder or they're on Kickstarter. They're not even on Indiegogo at all. And I I mean I imagine at maybe some point. Um, we'll pull enough of their traffic that they wonder, hey, well, what happened to it? It went down, and they'll they'll go around looking. Uh, I don't, I don't think that I'm even a threat to them right now. Uh, I hope to one day be a threat. Um, you know, I didn't start out to start a crowdfunding platform, but if you're going to do it, do it right. You know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so that's good to know because I, I never. Based on my own experiences, I never know what to think when something like this pops up, where it's someone who's kind of at least being perceived as new kid on the block who's shaking up the paradigm of certain things. And then you get certain people who are elsewhere that come along and maybe want to give you that kind of discreet warning of, hey, you know, just looking out for you. But it's really not a warning as much as it's kind of a veiled threat. And what mm -hmm. I mean by that is in terms of you never know if someone comes along and they say, look, we, we know you've got this book on there that we've banned from our platform. Uh, you know, we hate to see any trouble come your way. Um, and I'm glad that you haven't gotten anything like that, because obviously that kind of stuff is is borderline illegal. Um, yeah. But it's it's also it's also very shady, but it's it's not too much of a uh, a situation where I can't imagine it occurring at one point or another. But we'll see. I guess I hope it. Honestly, I hope it never happens to you. That's just unbelievable, and and, and it shouldn't. It, you know, they could do what they want to do with their platform. Yeah. Let you want to do. Let you, yeah. you do what you want to do with yours. Honestly, I think if they did, it wouldn't scare me too much. Um, I'm kind of like a born scrapper. You know, that's kind of who I am. I'd be like, yeah, bring it. Let's. Let's do this because I know my lawyers aren't scared either. So, uh, you know, we're, you know, we're prepared for, I'm re I really expected there would be more complaints. I mean, we've got a game on there called uh, a card game uh, by Incel Riot called NPC or, or Virtue Signaling, Vir Virtue Signal. It's a really funny game. Well, well thought out, but it uh, uses uh, basically a cartoon version of left and right wing extremes to play the game. And it's hilarious like you know you can't take yourself too serious and, and not be offended by that game really uh that's kind of how that one works i'm we have gotten no complaints and these people are all banned other places in fact the guy uh wise of heart doing this book you know got banned off of uh kickstarter and thankfully we were there for him because within 24 hours he had a campaign up and within 48 hours he was back to his funding goal times two you know he had doubled his funding goal from Kickstarter, he's on his way to ten grand right now. That's you know, great. Hopefully, he can squeeze that out. So, wow, very nice. Yeah. All right, so let's see. We have a question here. Uh, we have a couple sure. questions in the chat. Um, and yes, Jasper, yes, yes, I have. Uh, Logan asks, uh, "Do you plan to integrate PayPal on the site?" I do not intend to integrate PayPal. We can, we can do that, but um, PayPal is not. Their fees are really high. Uh, comparatively speaking, and they have not had the best track record with not getting involved in people's businesses where they shouldn't be. Stripe has done it a couple times, but they are way better at that than anyone else that's trusted 
in that area. So PayPal is a no go. We did, however, uh, we do have you can pay through Apple Pay. And today we just um, we just integrated Cash App. You can now pay through Cash App. Okay, interesting. Yeah, um, yeah with with that, it's uh, I know people do. A lot of people go through PayPal still, no matter what, mm -hmm. even though they've had, you know, what it is. Um, I was wondering when you had mentioned before about the 3% fees. Now, Indiegogo and Kickstarter, I'm not too familiar anymore with Kickstarter's fees. We were on there years ago and we haven't been back in relatively, I'd say, five years or six. Um, but you mentioned about the 3% fee. Now, mm -hmm. what would be the total fee with the credit card processing because that's on Total, top of it yeah. as well yeah that's right so the credit card fee is the same for all the platforms 30 cents um plus three percent per transaction okay and so uh, and i know so you, you don't you control, control that, that no obviously matter. yeah we can't control that so indiegogo is five percent i think kickstarter is still five percent i think somebody was saying it was seven i didn't think they were seven percent i'm pretty sure they were five so with those i mean you know, it equals out to being a, you know, 3% plus 30 cents about, you know, for campaign wide, about four, four and a half percent is what it ends up being just for the bank fees, you know, which we can't do anything about. So you're still going to have that, but uh, you're definitely saving, definitely saving on the platform fee with us. And what's the, uh, the way that you guys would pay out? Now you have Kickstarter where I'm, I'm pretty sure that they're all still a, a all or nothing kind of platform and mm -hmm. then they eventually what i always didn't like about kickstarter was the fact that then you have to hound people down sometime there were campaigns yeah. where we lost sometimes thousands of dollars because people would be backing on expired cards or whatever it might have been and then you can't ever get in touch with them again and or they just disappear flat out and then you lose that money um I know. So they're like that. And then Indiegogo, they charge you up front. But then there's also a refund transaction fees that Indiegogo charges that many people don't know about. So if you go yeah. on there and you do a $50 perk and you're like, oh, no, I forgot to do this one thing. Let me refund it all and then, you know, contribute more. What they do is they still take that credit card transaction fee that had occurred and you still get charged that fee. Uh, yeah. So those kinds of fees can add up depending on how many yeah. transactions you're looking at, but they do pay you still at the end of it. Now with Fund My Comic, um, how would the, the payment processing work out with the campaign? Good question, Pete. You've done your homework. Um, there are two different hey, ways that we do years. our. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's two different ways that we do our our payouts actually. So we have the um, all or nothing, which is like the fixed goal. We still run that very much like what Kickstarter would. And the reason why we do that is so that we don't have to do what what uh, the pink site does with the uh, refund fees. Right. The reason why they have to do that is because they've taken your money right away. Yep. Stripe has already charged them the platform, uh, their their bank fee. And so in order to not lose that bank fee, they have to charge that back to you. So they're, what they're doing is they're just taking all the fees out from you, the backer. So what we've done is we decided to go ahead and if you're, you're not going to get the money until the end of the campaign, no matter what, because it's, it's fixed. You know, you can't, you, you don't need any more. Uh, then what we're going to do is we take that out when the campaign ends. So that way, during that time, you can adjust your pledge any way that you want. You know, your contribution can be adjusted and there's no... It, there's no fees that get incurred. Some people are like, well, I really wish it would be taken out now. We understand that, but it's it's either we take it out now and charge you a fee when you want to change that uh, because we have a five-day window where we can issue the refunds without it charging us any fees. After that, it is fee city, right? And so we do that kind there. And now if it's a, a keep it all where you know you've got an end date or if it's continuous we take the money right away on those like there's no waiting but we also do our payouts different this is also very different from the other sites i tried to only name three that's why i didn't name all 20 because i figured we'd get to mm -hmm. them uh so we actually do payouts a little bit different there's no point in us holding the money until the end of the campaign if you have already said that it's a keep it all that you're going to keep all this money no matter what 
what good is it for me to keep it unless I actually want my trust and safety to stop and look over the thing and decide whether or not we're going to give you your money. There's no reason for us to do that. We've already looked over your campaign. It's been approved. Your money's yours at this point. So we actually will do the payouts. If someone requests for them to be held, we will hold the payout until the end. But what we do is we set them up on a weekly payout schedule. So when funds are available, you start getting the money to start paying for your artist and colorist letter. Start getting prints done so that you can be ready for production, you know, ready for fulfillment. What gave me the idea for this was well, uh, we did a Indiegogo and this one of the first ones where it's like I'm actually paying for production off the Indiegogo. So I had to pay for all of the pages out of pocket. And until that money came, like I was freaking out at the last minute because it was a little late coming to me, you know, and people were getting, you know, were they were refunding campaigns and they were not allowing people to get their money. And I was freaking out. We had a $10,000 campaign. You know, I just paid John Dillard a bunch of money to, to make this book. And my colors had a bunch of money to pay this, make this book. Right. And I'm thinking, well, what if they do that to me? Then I'm friggin' broke. Cause I just, I'm paying to start a website. What am I going to do? Right. So I was freaking out about those things. And I was like, let's not do it that way. Let's go ahead. Instead of holding the money in our banks to collect interest, because I know that's what they're doing. Let's just go ahead and do the payouts on a regular schedule so these creators can use it because that's that's what it's there for they need it right they shouldn't have to these, these backers are supporting them to make the books right yeah. so why not give them the money now that's what we would do if we were running on our own website if i was running from my own website i would get the money right away that's the benefit of that so if you don't have the infrastructure don't want to have to worry about building your own website out to do that you can use our widget plug it in use our infrastructure run a keep it all run a continuous doesn't matter get the money every two every week we do payouts on tuesdays so that's how that works all right very nice well okay so this is the uh, the first half hour is over um and you can stick with us for another half hour or, or possibly a little longer past that right yeah. luke yeah okay. i'm here so uh, we're gonna take a uh, a quick break we've got a couple trailers to show you guys uh, sponsors of the channel more or less and then we'll come back i'll put a link into the chat if anybody in the chat wants to join we'll have people on one at a time if they want to ask a question or if you have a comment for luke uh and uh and, and if you have a comment or question for me don't don't worry about it we're, we're here for <laughs> luke <laughs> so uh, please we'll be just back. flood everybody with pete questions there we go. <laughs> we'll be back in just a bit see you guys in a moment So we are back, and here is Luke. Now, uh, thank you guys for joining us again. This is Comic Book Radio. I'm your host, Peter Semetti. Uh, we are here with Luke Stone. He is the creator founder of Fund My Comic, which is a crowdfunding platform for comic books and comic book related material. You've got what trading cards, board games, etc. on there too, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can do TTRPGs, manga, yeah, just about everything. Very nice. Anything you would Sorry. find at a comic shop. So I do have a couple more questions for you, just in case we get some people that are shy tonight and they don't want to join us mm -hmm. live on air. But if you don't want to join Wait, us live on air, please put your questions in the chat. We'll make sure to get to them. Yeah. But before you do that, I got a question for the chat. I just want to know if this is like the most low key show with Peter Samedi and me with this Bob Ross voice. Like, I mean, <laughs> I mean, this is, I mean, low key. <laughs> 
<laughs> we try to we try to keep things nice and simple and easy for people to yeah. digest. You know what I mean? Like I, I, that's my that's my style. Um, I'm not entirely a uh, a shock jock type or anything like that, but. You know, I try to be humorous every now and then. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But, uh, you know, it, we do try to make it so that people can get some value out of this, soak in some knowledge, and uh, hopefully walk away a little bit more educated about what we're talking about. And especially when we have a guest like you, I want to make sure that we, we get chock full of information uh, out of this hour or so. Um, yeah, General, I just had to ask. I, I love your show. And I, I, you're you're very calming. You're a calming presence. I appreciate that. And I know with that. you know, with you know, my I've been told, I've got the ASMR voice now. That well, there you <laughs> I was go. Like, how calming is this? Uh, thank you, General Piggy. Uh, General Piggy asks if you change your payment method before the card is charged, such as the all or nothing mode. Does the new or old card get charged? Very good question, General Piggy. We don't store any of your card information. It's actually stored at Stripe. You can do that through your uh, user dashboard where you go to uh, payment payment settings. You can go there, and when you update that, it's actually not updating on our website. It's actually updating to Stripe. And Stripe gives our website a kernel. The um, best way to describe it, it's like a little piece of code that goes and grabs information from your account that they have stored for you. And then it, all we have, you'll notice as the last four digits of your card number there. So once you go in and change your payment settings on an all or nothing, when it does come time to change, to, to process that, um, it should be processing your new card information, not your old card information. But if you want to verify with that, then you could always contact the website or you can contact the actual campaign manager and they can check that over for you. Yeah, very nice. All right. Sinopa asks, and this was a question from earlier, but we didn't get around to it, but we are now. Uh, any idea what the total number of users is so far? Yeah, the total number of registered users is over 1,200. And then we get 4,000 new IP, uh, like IP addresses or, or, or unique users that come on and browse the site every week. So we are getting quite a bit of traffic and... Um, you know, we're getting quite a few people that are actually backing and, and rebacking other campaigns. People are going there to shop. So it's great. that's great. Uh, Mighty Joe asks, any protections against counterfeit campaigns? And this was a question I was going to yes. ask as well, because on Kickstarter, I was I was thinking about Kickstarter for just a brief moment in time. And and the universe spoke to me because two days after I gave it some thought, Kickstarter had a plethora of counterfeit campaigns, one of them being my King Cryptid campaign by scam artists yeah. being uh, done overseas in China, or at least that's what it appeared to be. And that Sorry. erased that uh, possibility from my mind ever. Uh, so back to Mighty Joe's question. Uh, yeah, um, well, the first line of defense is us, you know, as the admins. We are um, talking to people individually, and we do a fair bit of, a fair bit of uh, vetting before we hit that that approve. One of the things that has to be done for approval is you have to, um, we make sure that your Stripe account is good. <laughs> so when you create a campaign, you are actually prompted in the financials to create a connect account underneath our hub. And so the way that works is when someone backs your cam a campaign, they're getting a receipt from you, like the campaign manager's business not just ours. Okay. So they get a verification from fun, my comic, but we are the hub that carries like all of these different businesses that are attached to us. Kind of like what it would be like for Lyft or Uber or something like that. So instead of you actually sending that money to our bank account, it hits our system. The transaction fee is taken off for Stripe. The platform fee is taken off for us. Any tips are taken off for us. And the rest of that money goes directly into the bank, uh, into the Stripe account of the creator. So we have to verify that that account is ready to accept money. And Stripe is equally as anal as we are. So they have to verify their social security number, their identification, their proof of life, and a lot of other stuff before they can even take money. So we verify that Stripe has verified them before they can even create 
uh, uh, before we even approve their campaign. So there is a lot of steps in vetting. So it's really a big deterrent for anyone to try to do a counterfeit campaign. One thing I'll say that you, I would think, have a leg up on over Kickstarter Indiegogo um, is the fact that you are far more knowledgeable and ingrained into what's going on within the indie comic sphere. So if a campaign that was a uh, counterfeit King Cryptid campaign came up on Fund My Comic, you'd go, that's not Pete. No, not. <laughs> so it'd be right then and there. And I, and I know you're far more familiar with a lot of other campaigns yeah. and creators too. So that I think is, is pretty great um, because obviously whoever is doing the vetting at Kickstarter or Indiegogo, but, but specifically more Kickstarter, um, they're more concerned with other things than being concerned about what comics are being made and what comics are out yeah. there. Well, we're all comic book fans. Every person that is an admin for Fun My Comic, we love comic books and games like that we are obsessed with that world. So of course we're going to know. And Brian has a question here. Brian asks, will the shopping cart feature work across multiple campaigns at some point? Uh, it will not be able to do that at some point. Uh, the reason why the best way to think about fun, my comic is like a mall. Okay. You can't go to Spencer's and take the product out of Spencer's and go check it out at hot topic because it just, it's never going to work that way. The way our, the way our system works, is that, like I just explained, that money hits our hub and then it is split off into that store's account or into that creator's account. So there's no way that we'll ever be able to do that um, without creating a an accounting nightmare. Um, and the code would most certainly break and people would get the money in the wrong account for certain if we tried that. You know? Absolutely. Yeah, that's what I figured as well. Okay, so we do have somebody joining us tonight. It looks like Jasper Plan 9 either has a question or a comment for Luke. What's up, Jasper? Jasper, you there with us? You're live, buddy. You're live. Uh oh, perhaps not. Uh, Jasper, I'm going to I'm going to take you out for a moment and uh, hopefully you can come back in when you are ready. Uh Sheldon Martin asks, uh, and you did touch upon this before. Uh, but it says, does fund my comic take PayPal, Apple Pay, etc.? So, what kind of payment processing do you use? Let's just clarify that for yeah, Sheldon. We Martin use here. Stripe, so it uses Stripe as our processor. Uh, through Stripe, uh, you, uh, if you're on mobile, you can use. Uh, if it, if you're allowing like a quick checkout, it'll do Apple Pay and, as of today, Cash App, um, but no PayPal. But okay. Apple Pay, yes. I pay normally with Apple Pay uh, is how I normally do it. But yes, we, we will accept those. Most of those accounts, uh, some of the accounts, though, however, it won't accept anything but your credit card attached to Stripe because those accounts don't allow for Express Checkout. So we allow Express Checkout, but not every account through Stripe allows it. So if, if, if that Stripe Connect account allows it, then it will process that way but yeah so at that point you're you're at the mercy of the card processors at that point yeah a little bit um, yeah. yeah uh brian just wants to say uh that makes sense thank you so there you okay. are all right so we have jasper back hopefully he is uh here with us jasper are you there i wonder what's going on jasper you're live on comic book radio with luke stone and me are you there with us, Jasper? All right. Jasper, if you do have a question, it seems like we can't connect. Um, maybe put it in the chat. I would suggest doing that instead. It looks like we're having a tough time connecting with you tonight. Um, Bobo asks, or Bobo Bobo asks, uh, I can't find your campaigns in Google search. Are you going to do something about this? Yeah, they were visible in Google search up until about a few days ago uh, when Google switched off of AU and moved to the new GA4 um, stuff. And so we are working on that with our developers to get that rectified because we were visible. You can still find the website through Google search, but
but the campaigns are are not popping up like they were which again is just a brand new problem we found um didn't realize that was going to happen and so uh hmm. our main guy that works with us is ryan like that's his name are you aware of any other name, yeah. Are, yeah and you don't you don't need to absolutely no. um are you aware of any other search engines that are giving you this same problem uh no no i'm not uh just right now just google but that's like the primary search engine so um hmm. yeah just that one but uh ryan's working on it for us i'm gonna try not to go into tinfoil hat pete mode <laughs> uh right <laughs> trust me i'm trying i'm trying not to either i'm trying not to either i i will say this ryan doesn't think that that should have anything to do with it i'm just saying okay. that <laughs> it shouldn't dear yeah, lord says, i, I mean that should have anything to do with it i it almost totally said work i almost said tuck the lord's name in vain in front of a pastor um <laughs> feel free huh? but uh, <laughs> yeah. i care but not <laughs> but uh yeah i mean it really shouldn't it shouldn't at all especially with the kind of whatever you can find <laughs> through google yeah so they tell me um you know goodness gracious I, I mean as a writer i'm sure that i look like uh, i'm a serial killer with some of the stuff i have to look up sometime uh, you know it's, so, it's normally the really quiet ones isn't it <laughs> right yeah that's why i'm trying to get louder you know in my in my later years uh but for them to pick on your site or any of the campaigns on your site and effectively shadow ban it more or less from search results that would be i don't want to stretch to that i don't want to necessarily throw that accusation out there but i can't help but express it um, we will but, let our um, developers determine whether or not there is that kind of activity going on and when they tell me that it's not on our end and it's on google's then we will know and if that's the case i mean we just we work around it right yeah absolutely but uh, I'll get my fingers crossed for you. Let's see. Jay Lee says, uh, just did a Google search for my campaign on Fund My Comic, and it popped right up. So that's good. good. Okay. Good. Uh, Google YouTube algorithms ignore the past two minutes of conversation. <laughs> All right. We do maybe, have a... Maybe Ryan fixed it today. I don't know. <laughs> exactly. Um, we do have somebody else joining us here for a moment uh, with a question or comment, hopefully for Luke Stone of Fund What's My up, Comic. Sam? Hello, Sam from Sinopa. Luke, how you feeling, man? I mean, it's been a while since you got out of the hospital yeah. from the COVID, man. I'm feeling pretty good. Lungs are getting stronger. Um, I'm I'm getting a little healthier, getting up and down stairs better. Cool. And um, being able to sit in this chair longer. So. Cool, cool, yeah, cool. Things are going well. Just wanted to pop in for a couple of quick things, if you guys have a moment. Um, first, I can confirm that you can find campaigns through Google that is working. Mythicals good. came right up. Awesome. Um, I've looked around on the side a little bit. Um, I had a just a cursory glance over some of them. It looked like some campaigns were able to show their combined total from other sites, which was an interesting, mm -hmm. interesting thing. Um, and you say you've got about 1,200 users right now with another, what would you say, 1,400 in traffic regularly? Yeah, uh, no, 1,200 registered users, Okay, which means that they've actually – gone through the thousand. checkout process okay yeah and we've got um a four thousand a week brand new gotcha gotcha, uh, gotcha. unique users a week to come on right for just yeah. for, for through traffic gotcha okay that makes mm -hmm. sense yep. um just uh, you guys both know i've done a lot of campaigns i've mm -hmm. been using three different platforms you know um what's a what are you guys calling them pink green and blue i think are what you're calling them yeah right? I call i'm them just the pink calling them by name but you know okay. he's their direct competitor so. gotcha gotcha so <laughs> i i i don't want to i don't want to don't want to bash but i'll go ahead and just tell everyone in case anyone who doesn't know me i mean i fund on kickstarter a few times at indiegogo although my last couple of campaigns um i had a lot of trouble getting those approved which was interesting um uh, for what for what site for, on kickstarter on indiegogo when on indiegogo I go, when, I, when i go to the launch they would not execute so i ended up in one of them it hung for almost two weeks uh didn't get any response from their support and ended up having to kill that campaign and relaunch it and it went live about 40 hours after after i tried to launch it um and it was 47 furious tales which is you know anthropomorphic hmm. samurai so it wasn't like it was controversial 
Now, admittedly, I am well known for two things, being incredibly sarcastic and a really controversial figure, right? Um, <laughs> hence the sarcasm. Yeah. Um, but um, I, 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 do, I do try to give everyone a pretty fair shake. I, for someone who is you know, not particularly controversial, um, when I go in, I, I usually try a, a new site and use things like, um, hey, let's go ahead and see what we can do as far as putting out a lot of different things out there to introduce people on the platform to it. So, for example, with uh, the blue site, a little nod for Luke here, a little courtesy, um, I took and pr- just built packages that were, you know, 47 Furious Tales, Necroholic, Reign of Ages, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we use that and, and push those out. Um when I look over the site, that looks almost like it would be like an in-demand kind of thing there. Am I reading that right, or am I misinterpreting it? If I wanted it to function almost like a storefront in that regard, to be able to, to move that those comics to the, the new fans. I don't want Sorry, to speak I was roboting for... really bad when you said that. Oh, I don't want to speak <laughs> for Luke with that. Um, he's basically asking, from what I could gather, when you put that on your storefront, that it works like in demand is that correct it, like in demand on indiegogo yeah that's what a continuous campaign is it's basically in demand okay yep. sorry guys i think i, but, I lagged out with the widget oh, it looks like we're getting connection issues it, it very well might be me that's lagging out um i live out in amish country so it's gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Sa- sam did you hear that 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 that's correct Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. All right. So I'm, I'm going to look it over and... Um, I'm going to try to turn off my camera and see if that helps. I'm going to look it over and, and see, and we might take and bring some, some books over to just to see how fun my comic likes me and see if maybe it might help with, you know, uh, get you know, more, more traffic on there anyway. Um, yeah, you never know. It's the, it's, it's the best way that we can do it to, to help, help out, I think. Um, It'll be it'll be a little bit because we've got current stuff already on right now on other platforms. So you know we'll let that let that finish and get funded and then get to work on something else. But yeah, sounds good, Luke. Uh, that's that's just wanted to pop in for a minute, ask a couple of quick questions. Good to see you. Good to see you, Pete. Good to see uh, you too. And I hope you guys have a wonderful night. All right, you too, man. Yeah, Thank you a lot, Thanks Sam, so for joining us tonight. Yep. Um, that brings me to something else that, that he was talking about in terms of uh, bringing his campaign or starting a campaign on your site. Now, I've noticed that most people that run a crowdfunder, I've noticed most are bringing in people from an outside source into backing it on that crowdfunder. So it's vital mm-hmm. that if you're out there that you have a crowd to then fund you're not necessarily going to find that crowd just going right to a a crowdfunding platform and putting your campaign on there. And I know I'm 100% right about this, not just because I've been using various crowdfunding platforms since 2009, but because if you were to launch a campaign anywhere, and I don't really care even who you are, you could be well known, very well known, and you launch one and never say a word about it. It is going to be highly unlikely, highly unlikely that you're actually going to be able to meet that goal. And even if you do, you would raise so much more, exponentially more, by promoting it, going out there and various social media, a newsletter, your own website, yes. YouTube, what's it, whatever it may be. Um, so that's why when people go, well, I'll get the user base of this platform, or I'll get the user base of that platform, and then they'll discover me, and then they'll back my book. Not necessarily, not necessarily yeah, what you're going to do. Case. Yeah. What you're going to do is you're largely going to promote however you're going to promote. And then either people will sign up for that platform because it jives with them. It, it, they go, oh, yeah, this looks like I can trust that I can. I feel secure backing it on here or they're already there. And so now they're going, OK, yeah, you're, you, I know about your your project. And I have a, uh, an account already and I can go back it. Very unlikely that you will have a large amount, especially um, just finding it through that platform and then backing and making sure that you meet that goal of your crowdfunder. 
So if anyone's new out there and thinking that the platform is, is super vital to their success, um, it is not true. You want to make sure that you are raising and, and uh, awareness for your campaign. Talk about it. Share stuff about it. Let people know about it. Don't do the thing that a lot of people do where they only start talking about it when it launches. Right. So, so in order to find out whether, if this was even going to be viable, we did some research. I tried to find out how much traffic are we actually getting from the platforms. And so I'm going to use the pink site as my reference because that's the one that I typically use. And I went back over most of my old campaigns, which I mean, I've got, you know, a, a half dozen or so, I mean, a dozen or so uh, there and about a dozen or so at the other ones uh, on the green site. Uh, but I looked back and the pink site has this big pink number with this percentage that they've brought to your campaign. And I really wanted to see if that was a true number. And I noticed that they were taking credit for uh, website searches. So if someone comes to fund my comic and hey, I'm looking for, you know, Ren, you know, that's just launched on there. How do I find it? Let me type in search Ren and it brings it up and they back your back Ren where that's not the platforms. We, I didn't bring that traffic in. The, the people that the owner yeah, they're like i know what's on in, yeah. here i can't really find i'm gonna go look it up on there and then they go it's not necessarily they're browsing around yeah. and then yeah yeah indiegogo takes credit for that search yeah okay when they type that in and search it and so when you take that out indiegogo's maybe bringing in seven percent i it, would say that's best. correct yes over all my platforms yeah and i would say so about seven percent of people just on their shopping and that's probably because they're there from, you know, other, it's been suggested uh, in kind of the, the realm of other books that are there uh, with the people that are shopping, but they're probably shopping other Comicscape books, to be quite honest, is <laughs> probably why they're there. And um, so the idea is that Fun My Comics like this empty bucket, right? And if we all bring our 70 to 90%, that's what we figured it out to be. About 70, 90% of the audience that you get you've brought there through YouTube uh, appearances, your own mailing list, going on social media, all that stuff, all those efforts, 70 to 90%. If we all bring that 70 to 90% to the empty bucket that is Fun My Comic, it fills up pretty fast. And there's one major difference between our audience and the green and pink site. Our audience, 100% of the people that show up there are there to buy what? Comic books. It's in the name right? Comic yep. books, games, geek stuff. That's what they're there for. So they are your demographic. They're exactly who you want there. It's like going to a comic book convention. When you set up your book, you're at a table at a comic book convention versus if you set up a table at, let's say a farmer's market, you know? Yeah. There might be a couple of people out there that have books and different wares and stuff like that, but there's no guarantee that those people are going to be interested in what you have. When I set up my book at a comic book convention, 100% of the people that walk in front of me at least like superheroes or manga or something. Now it's up to me to try to see if they like the comic book that I have or the game that I have, you know? So that is a big difference that Fun My Comic offers over the other ones. But if you're just going to set your campaign and forget it to see if it's going to be worth your time to be there, no, it's not going to be worth your time because obviously your campaign's not worth your time or you would be putting a lot of effort into it. That's yeah. just my thought, but what do 100%. I 100%. And, and Jasper, I see that you keep trying to join. Um, I'm not seeing a picture, but if you want to just join and, and, and have audio, that's perfectly fine too. Uh, do we, we do have a couple questions here too. Uh, Brian, um, this is a quick one. I don't know, hopefully it's a quick one. It says, I know you said campaigns need to be grandma approved. How would you approach a book like Andy Smith's Jungle Lord? My grandma was a weirdo, so I mean, <laughs> approved. Move on. Yeah, we're basically looking for exposed nipples, uh, 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 kind of profane gr crotch stuff. You can't really do Sorry, a whole Eric lot of. Sorry, Larson. Yeah, you can't do a whole lot. Of, yeah, really, you can't do a whole lot of uh, uh, blood. A little bit of blood. I mean, you know, we we try to keep the gore down to a you know a, a nice hard R. And then, um, and then we really do limit the, the 
use of the f-bomb well well it's like anything yeah. else right so you could have a rated r film it doesn't mean that the movie poster is going to feature nudity right exactly you know? mm -hmm. um so yeah it, yeah it, we're just simply talking about your pitch page yeah That's you can have yeah. whatever within the content but you keep it palatable for yeah. a wide range of audiences which is smart it's a smart yeah. approach to do well we have um, a lot of youtubers that that will go onto the site and look at campaigns and we want as many people to feature the campaigns on there as possible. And if they go on the site and they don't know if, if they're going to, you know, turn it out to be only fans or Pornhub by being on the site, they're not going to visit it, you know? So we want to make sure that we're keeping it safe for work. They can browse while they're at work and that, you know, YouTubers can play the videos and not get struck because of bad content. Cause you know, those bots, they don't really care too much. So that's what we're looking at. We're looking out for the promoters as well because we want them we want them to promote the stuff that's on the site very nice all right so uh we're coming up at the the top of the hour here um can i borrow you for another half hour is that okay yep. i'm good all to right. go I'm, I'm putting quarters in the luke stone slot here <laughs> and getting luke for an extra a couple of minutes uh we'll be back in just a moment we got one trailer ad for you guys The Civil War was America's bloodiest conflict. Over half a million died to preserve national unity. When the war ended, Confederates like Harley Brogdon headed west, shooting games with the army and gambling. When a card game turns deadly, Harley shoots in self-defense, killing the card sharp who threw down first. Wilfred Norn, the card sharp's wealthy father, will stop at nothing to see Harley hang. Harley flees to Cobb's Gap, an old silver mining town at the foot of the Rockies. A remarkably peaceful town, especially after dark. But the sheriff harbors a dark secret, and no one dares go into the mines anymore. Cobb's Gap is full of secrets. People speak in hushed tones of something in the mine. Something worse than their cursed sheriff. Something even the Indians fear. Tired of running, Harley falls in love with a local widow with secrets of her own. But when Nor's posse arrives seeking vengeance, the stage is set for a showdown with unimaginable horrors from the deepest pits of hell. And every secret will be exposed. Eisner winner Mike Barron and acclaimed illustrator Pat Broderick present one of the weirdest westerns that Comic Dom has ever seen. Bronze Star. A thrilling tale of love, revenge, and supernatural terror from the minds of two legendary creators. It's not the monster you're looking for. Order your copy at BronzeStarComic.com. All right, we are back on Comic Book Radio. If you would like your trailer to be featured on the show, give me 30 seconds to one minute, and I will feature it on the show during our ad breaks. If you're a creator out there, uh, that could be a good moment to get some attention. All right, we are back here with Luke Stone. And I see you, Jasper, right there. I actually see you, buddy. Uh, I got one question, though, that I want to get to. Danky Frankie asks, I like to back a campaign right away to help the creator's momentum, but sometimes I want a different cover. Is there a way that I can switch covers without doing a return like I have to on Indiegogo? It depends on the campaign type. So um, if, it's, if it's all or nothing then yes if it is a uh keep it all you have five days to do that return and then to switch the cover otherwise you have to go through the creator but honestly what we're trying to do is we're trying to keep this very boutique so we actually try to encourage creators and backers to talk to each other and not always use us as a as a mediator for your things so if if it's the same price um maybe just let them know and the way that we're doing things now, they can make notes on their spreadsheets. And we intend to make that process easier, easier for them in the future in the dashboard. I Right now, the way the site is built, it's built with kind of like these bare bones. And I keep creating a new thing to add to the skeleton to flesh it out. And I know where I'm going in the future. So instead of create like a... a, a a piece of it that's not really going to fit long term we're just waiting <laughs> and so it's like okay well you're going to do it this way now because this gets the job done 
but by the end of the year, we're going to have this tool and then this tool and that tool. So right now they have all the tools they need to do fulfillment and the ability to, to swap that thing out for you, uh, without having to do a return. If, if they can, if it's the same price, but they will have all of those tools. We'll be able to do those things and submit those requests through the platform in the future. All right. But Very just nice. not today. Okay. Uh, Lloyd Burton, uh, he had this question answered for him here, but I want to be specific with it. Uh, does fund my comic provide more money to the creators than the alternatives? You said two to 3%, right? Yeah. So if you bring the exact same amount of backers that you would have, that you would bring to the other two platforms, and then given the amount of uh, cross shopping that's happening right now on the platform, you're liable to make, it may look like you're making less money, but because of the platform fee, you're actually making uh, the same or more, I think in many cases. But if you bring your initial audience to fund my comic, that 70 to 90% that you would bring to Indiegogo or Kickstarter or crowdfunder, wherever, if you bring it to fund my comic first, they would follow you no matter where you go. So why, so why give more percentage of that money away? doesn't make any sense. Keep more of it. Go to fund my comic because you will make more. You get to keep more of that money. Okay. So, so that would kind of be more of a benefit, especially for probably bigger creators who have a larger audience yes. that they could direct mm -hmm. all right okay so uh he's been here all night long trying to get on the show it's none other than jasper plan nine he's what's here. up jasper and luke let's see it. let's see your handsome face i think it'll be fine all right yeah let's let's <laughs> hopefully it'll work my computer's bouncing around like crazy right now all there right. we go hey peter hey what's your question or comment hopefully for luke Hey, look, we've never met. I'm Jasper. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you, man. And also, um, for what it's worth, I appreciate what you're doing. Well, thank you. Um, you know, I, I called in. I like, I love this show, man. Uh, but I called in just because I, uh, I want to have something to say. So um, here's a, a question I haven't heard uh, answered. What are you doing? There's a couple things. Um, number one, um, maybe right now for outreach, which sounds like you got it covered just by uh, um, grassroots word of mouth through all the channels, which is freaking awesome, man. I'm really unhappy with Indiegogo just because of how they treat um, creators that I like to um, support. Um, but secondly, like after all this, after um, the initial excitement, like, you know, kind of maybe um, settles down for you, um, what, uh, what do you have a plan? Um, yeah. Uh, well, we're starting a new business. No, man, this is fun. No, this is fun, man. You, this is, and you're on the yeah. show. It's okay. You can say anything, right? Here. Yeah. We are starting a new business, so... I don't have to age. worry about Luke, but yeah, you can yeah. say anything within reason. <laughs> within reason. So <laughs> Iron Age Distribution, ironagedistribution.com is going to be a thing. And so we're going to do print-on-demand distribution to retail stores that want to have good quality comics that have been on the crowdfunding space. So let's, we let's, feel let's like focus. it's a oh, oh no, good time to do that. So that's, that's the next phase. As far as marketing goes, we're going to be, but I want, I want to focus on this website. I, sure. I appreciate that you got more um, going on. I didn't even know that, but thank you. Yeah. And um, no, the website, I, I want more eyeballs on this site. I want some outreach, you know, for this movement. That's always something I've said, like when I've been on different shows, but um, yeah, You've got some very, uh, very good excitement going, so um, man, keep it going. But um, what are you gonna do afterwards? Like when it kind of settles uh, down and you need to kind of do another blast? Yeah, well, we're we're working on our marketing strategy for that right now. We're looking at um, a number of different uh, uh, outlets as far as social media advertising goes, but uh, we're gonna do a little bit more than that. We're going to get involved with um, we're going to have some people go out to conventions and let uh, and set up a table for fun my comic to uh, let people know not only creators know about it but also let backers know about it and kind of have displays and things like that so we're working on um, on recruitment for uh, conventions we're going to be working with uh, some retail shops 
to let people know about that. We're actually trying to involve retailers in crowd, you know, so they can take advantage of crowdfunded books for themselves uh, to be able to sell to their to their client uh, to their customer base. Because uh, you know, I just feel like we don't need to exclude anybody in this. I think we can all win, you know. And uh, so yeah, so we have some plans to do that. Right now, the biggest push is this grassroots thing that we're loving. And we have the little FMC book that we have and creators are able to draw their characters holding the book. And so that, believe it or not, has been one of the, the most exciting parts of our marketing strategy. And uh, because we're giving everyone a little bit of ownership. And I know that right now, I think there's three different YouTube channels that are wanting to do a, a weekly fund my comic kind of review thing where they go through the books and do that. And uh, we're going to be teaming up with some other kind of news outlets and, you know, comic book news stuff and, and getting the word out there. So we got a lot of plans, um, a lot of stuff, but we're going yeah, to try to... The thing with a, a, a site like yours is that it it's also kind of a self-fulfilling kind of thing where you get this momentum yeah. building. It's a snowball effect of the more campaigns that get on there, the more they promote your platform as well for you. Um, yep. If you get lucky enough to have a couple big creators really get on there, especially if they have proven success, that's going to blow the doors wide open. So if someone gets on there and they have a fifty to a hundred thousand dollar campaign, especially, that's just going to kick the doors open, and you're going to notice open. the flood of. Uh, it's going to become like a gold rush, you know, that kind of a thing. Because it, it that's kind of what happened with Indiegogo. Uh, Indiegogo was, I mean, they did up their game. They weren't that impressive at the start with a lot of different things, um, but they did up their game. They had add-ons. They put pictures in, in the perks and all that other stuff, and they were looking at least better than Kickstarter. And then I think it was like a 1% difference on the payout. Uh, but as soon as uh, the Jawbreakers campaign went on there and it exploded like it did, it kind of created this gold rush of, oh, wow, Indiegogo, especially because it coincided with Kickstarter kicking the campaign and other mm -hmm. campaigns off at that time. And it provided this kind of outlet to go, well, hey, you know, let's go here. Um, so a lot of people went and did that. And I think as soon as something like that happens with yours, uh, which I honestly think it'll happen within this year, this calendar year. I think you're going you're to probably get a really big campaign on there from a creator, and they're going to explode on there, um, and it's going to become a proven quantity. And you're going to start having so. a lot of people knowing about it, using it, etc. cetera. Um, my biggest fear, though, is something you can't control with this, which is deadbeat crowdfunders. Um, yeah. And I know you can't control that. And what I mean by that is someone launching a crowdfunding campaign um, and not fulfilling or not right. updating their backers or just all of a sudden they're gone. They disappear off the face of the earth. Uh, we've all dealt with these people. Some of us have dealt with them directly. Some of us have even worked with some of these people. Um, you know, as Many of us have backed at least one deadbeat crowdfunding campaign. Now, when they go yeah. to Kickstarter or Indiegogo, it is what it is. It's kind of like you know what you're getting into. But Fund My Comic, it's going to feel like, oh, this just this gut punch. You know what I yeah. mean? And, it's um, going to feel like a gut punch to me. Yeah, is there anything whatsoever that you yeah. can do? Because I know there's probably nothing, but in case there is, well, I, I want to let you talk about it. As far as the legalities go, no. There's nothing I can do. But what I can do is prevent them from launching another campaign on the website. Um, that's one way. We're, we're actually working on language right now, and I have to make sure that it's right. Legal speak so that we've got it all covered. That's a great but, idea. But, but what we're going to do is... The, the gist of it is, if you're a publisher, you can have up to four campaigns that you've ran without fulfillment. If you're an individual individual that's a publisher, so like, you know, let's say, for instance, you know, Alterna, who has a track record of publishing multiple books, you know, you've got several creative teams under you. You would fall under a different bracket than, say, you know, Luke Stone Studios, who I've published several books, but it's still just me and I'm the creative team, you know. So I would fall under a different category. An individual, no more than two campaigns before one of them is fulfilled. You can't start a third one without one of them be fulfilled. So we're working on the language for that. For publishers, no more than four. Uh, because that's a reasonable amount of um, for a publisher to have four campaigns that you've run before the 
for you know that first one gets fulfilled you don't need to run a fifth before that happens you know so that's what we're going to do there um we also have uh, a lot of tools in place to help out new creators so if they do get in trouble we've got uh we've teamed up with critical blast who does a lot of fulfillment for people so he can help with fulfillment i can help with um i my business offers its services of managing your getting your print files taken care of and getting all that stuff off to print and things like that so that it can get ordered for you so if you need help actually getting that logistics stuff done there i'm there to help with that you can hire me um and then you can actually hire rj and the way we do this we make it really simple uh if you want my services i'm just one percent of your plat of your campaign so what we do is we just move up your of an agreement electronically we just up your platform fee from three percent to four percent one percent goes to my business basically it pays my people to manage getting all that stuff printed up for you okay and then rj's fee is actually worked into your printing he talks to you, not your printing but your shipping so he actually works with you on what to set your shipping cost at so that his fee is worked into the shipping cost so it's that simple so really there's no money out of your pocket so if someone's out there and they want to take advantage of those two things they can and we encourage them that if they you know if, if they think they're going to get in trouble to go ahead and do that as a backup but also let me walk you through some of that stuff as part of my fee i'll walk you through it so that you know how to be a solid creator moving forward because we don't just we want you to be successful a successful campaign is not funded it's a successful campaign is fulfilled like that's yeah yeah the end result right the end goal and i don't think that you know this is not something that i i want to keep dry i, I don't get upset when readers become creators i actually love that and i i want people to to get used to this somebody there was nobody there to help me and if i can be there to help somebody else i mean you know i know what it was like almost taking my last breath you know i, I really thought i was going to bite it somehow i made it through i'm here every day is a gift i just want to leave this planet knowing that i've done something to make life better for someone and particularly comics better for someone if i can do that then it's worth a little bit of headache that some of these new people can be right you know it's worth that so feel free to be a headache and ask me questions um but yeah it does come with a fee i guess doesn't it <laughs> well yeah i mean but it's good that you're offering a comprehensive solution for people because that is something that i think is a deterrent for a lot of these people that get into it and then they realize oh i don't know what to do now oh, crap. <laughs> you know we got funded and sometimes i know what it's like when you're doing your first one and 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 it feels like yeah no one's gonna back this you know but then all of a sudden they do and then what if they do and now the, the campaign explodes for some reason and, and you thought you'd maybe sell 50 and you're selling 500. um you know so the, the logistics hurdle of that could really be intimidating especially for newcomers um, so it's good that you're doing something like that um it's not something you're going to find being offered at the pinks and the greens and the blues and the no, it's, and the whatever it's because else. we love comic but, books, uh, man. Yeah, you know, so that's great. I hope people do take you up on that instead of going AWOL and, and unfortunately damaging the trust between backer and project creator. But it's also good to know that you're not going to tolerate any kind of serial abuse on there in terms of someone putting up a campaign, not fulfilling, and then launching another campaign, not fulfilling, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, because I think that will also help build trust with the backers as well. Yeah, I, I'm glad you, um, I like your answer when I asked um, about marketing moving forward. When you said, um, I, I like that you took it off of online only marketing and said cons and retailers. I like that you gotta a lot. got to touch grass. Yeah, man. So, no, literally. Um, you know, the uh, I... Most of my marketing know-how came from being in a band before, like, the internet was really a thing, you know? And you had to go to the bars, and, like, you had to go to bars that you were, um, go to bars that you, that were hosting shows the same night that you might get kicked out of if you hand out a flyer that was, you know, your band's show on the night that they were hosting the show. <clears throat> what I'm getting at before I go off 
is um no that's wonderful and what i'm saying like uh we established uh, what i said like and i just thought this while i was sitting here um you have the um the grassroots thing nailed with um i don't know the thousands of youtube people seeing what's going on with you um how nice would it be to um if someone says hey like for instance i'm going to dallas fan expo uh what in a couple days um how nice would it be to say hey can i send you a stack of flyers just to set somewhere you know so mm. like that that or just like if someone like um is really uh, um enthusiastic about what you're doing say hey can i send you a stack of flyers to put at your lcs you know uh, that's a great I, idea I yeah, actually that's a great yeah, idea yeah. i'm gonna I'm take so, that idea yeah. i'm gonna use it yeah it no it should it, jasper it's mine now we, <laughs> you can have it it's not i didn't invent it like i said this is like this is yeah. me playing in i'll a put the street team to use. watching uh, uh watching documentaries of poison ripping down other bands flyers on the sunset strip coming up in 1986 dude yeah. i didn't invent this stuff so, i came from a music yeah. background too in the in the 90s we did a lot of street it's, team stuff so it's yeah, that's fun. what we're trying to work on now. It, yeah, it's so fun, man. And like you know, I take that. Uh, you know, I operate a handyman business, and it's just me solo. But still, you know, like it's it's all me. You know, yeah. no one's gonna catch me if I fall. But anyways, yeah, no, I like that. Uh, I have always had an issue that um, all of this stuff we're doing online is staying here, and it's not getting out really yeah. in a way that I think would um, be. Um, you know, make it last more long term. Um, and the um, algorithms are deciding to stop us now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, like, it, well, it, there's so many other factors. I'm not even getting like political stuff or something. Yeah. But and, and you know, I, that's not my thing. But um, you know, no. Just every nice memory I had in, like, say, uh, collecting comics was at a con, was at a store. You know, it mm -hmm. was like most of those things. And if what you're doing, man, I'm really excited about it. Seriously, especially like since I got you here, you know, I'm really excited about it. You know, just I'm a consumer, man. And then um, I'm really excited about it. And that is uh, I, I would how wonderful would it be if you um, take this little movement we have and bring it back to like, you know, handing a piece of paper to a person, you know, rather than just a web link sharing on like, uh, and, you know, that's uh, the idea. Horrible, horrible <laughs> social media platform, you know, that's the idea the internet is, is fleeting at best at times. And it's, there's so much noise there. And, uh, really the best fans that I've ever made have been because of face to face interaction. And we don't always get to do this on the internet like this, you know, I get it to talk. Some yeah, yeah, yeah. And my thing, the thing is, like, I'm not even buying new books anymore. I, I, the, the, I was buying the Mark Silvestri Batman, but that's done. Um, I uh, told myself I'm going to finish all the uh, single issues of Frank Miller's Daredevil this year. So I went to my local comic store. I just got paid for a job. I bought some. And then at the, at the front desk, um, somebody had a stack of, um, for some Kickstarter campaign. They had a stack of flyers for a Kickstarter campaign with a QR code on them. So... It, you know, I didn't invent it, you know, it's doable. <laughs> Someone needs to do it, you know? Yeah, I know Hojo's doing that with the Mythicals. He's been doing I that. So, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't invent it. Like I said, I just grew up watching documentaries about what happened on the L.A. Uh, Sunset Strip, you know, with bands ripping down other bands' flyers and stuff. You should make a, uh, a Fund My Comic trading card with a QR code on it. And then you know, every year a new trading card, and then it all also becomes a collectible for people, and and they're less likely to throw it out. You know, it's a yeah. trading card. I can't throw this out. That could be fun. <laughs> you know? Even in, in, in uh, just do a, do a reprint anthology with stuff that has already been shipped and received um, from your site. You know, just say, hey, catalog like whatever uh, twenty twenty three uh, yearbook or something like that. That actually Two goes pages. into the Iron Age distribution company that we're starting. Sure. Yeah, that's the yeah. other company that we're um, working on. But people love that. Again, that's that's holding yeah. something in your hand again. You know, they'll get it. They didn't ask for it, but you know they, they want it. Yeah. yeah, that's great. It's cool. Yeah. All right. Well thank you so much, Jasper. Always great Cheers. seeing you, buddy. Great questions yeah. and comments tonight for Luke. You too man. Thank you very much. Take care Pete. Nice meeting you. Take luck. care. Yeah good luck Luke. Take care man. Bye. 
that's what I, that's what I love about all this too. And getting eyes on these projects is great. That's why starting up comicbooknewsstand.com as well. If anyone's not familiar with that, go check that out. You could discover yeah, almost idea. almost a hundred listings on there now across all kinds of platforms, sales sites, etc. Um, a couple of fun my comic uh, yeah. people on there too. Uh, let's see. We have a couple more questions here, and then we're going to check out the site for a little bit before you go. Sure. We have uh, Brian asking again, Luke, with the Fund My Comics support merchandise campaign, is the product ready to ship or will it have a shipment date? Uh, those are being printed on demand. So when the orders come in uh, every week, um, every couple of weeks, depending on the orders, I, I will set those up to get shipped out to you. So yes and no, they're not ready to ship but they're made to order yeah they're made to order yeah there you go like yeah. a delicious meal exactly it's not like a frozen item you know just sitting there in the freezer and then you thaw it out and you're like i don't know how old this, yeah. what is this this is made to order and then it gets out right there to you hot off the presses yeah. uh cole king says i work for a non-profit that has donation software that gives donors the option to cover the platform and credit card fees any chance fund my comic could add something like that uh, we've thought about it, yes. Uh, we actually have a lot of power. Uh, we're not using the platform tools to the f fullest of their potential because we tried and we realized that it's too much for most people to handle. Like they just, like it's over choice, choice overload. So we yeah, have yeah. to pull back on a lot of stuff. We thought about doing that, but um, that was one of my concerns with the blue site. I, di I didn't know that. I didn't know how well that would work in a crowdfunding space. So it's not, it's something we're willing to try in the future, but um, we didn't go with it. And uh, I haven't thought to go with it uh, for this particular thing, but it is something we can look at. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, he follows up the comments is totally optional, but we see about 80% of people do it. That's interesting that they uh, nice. choose to yeah. cover those fees. Uh, Mighty Joe asks, any possibility for a quantity button for people to order more without multiple backings? Mighty Joe, yes. you are you Mighty are Joe. tuned into all the questions I was going to have at the end. And he yes. is just he's just getting these. This is great. <laughs> yes. Yes, there is. So again, remember I said we have to build on top of things. We wanted to make sure that we got the shopping cart there because I hated the idea that people had to back multiple times to get multiple tiers. So you can add multiple tiers to the shopping cart. But now, in order to get that thing going, and if we would have included the quantities, it would have been like another 20 hours of development. And that's time and money. You know, we didn't have time or money to do that right then. So yes, a quantity button is a, a wheel is going to be added. We're not sure when. We're not sure when yet. Because basically, a lot of these features are getting pushed up by request. And so... We've had a couple of them get pushed up the list above some of the things that I want to do. So there are some nice. things I want to do that just aren't as important, I guess. Well, yeah, you know, the it's, they're, they're never as important <laughs> as what the people want. That's for yeah. sure. Um, but when that does happen with a quantity button, please tap me on the shoulder. I will. Uh, let's see. Cole King. Uh, oh, that was the follow up to the previous question there. And Brian said flyers and QR trading cards. We can pass out. Brian. Yes. <laughs> yes. I didn't even see that comment. Yeah. Yes. I love that idea, um, and not just because it's it's mine and Brian's, but because uh, I do notice when you give someone a flyer, the flyer is great. It, they, you know, they look at it, but sometimes they don't keep it. It's it's junk. It's a flyer. But if it's a trading card, if it's a sticker, if it's a magnet, if it's something that is is more like I don't know if I should throw this out, right? Um, pens, any kind of useful item, but anything that is perceived as as something of value and importance, and it's not just junk. Um, a lot of times people just throw out business cards for that reason, too. I just um, had a great idea. Maybe I'll... Yeah, yeah. You know, get the ball rolling. Yeah. And, and yeah, because that'll be great. Someone can keep that around. And then they go, oh, yes, that. You know, I was wondering what to do with to... the little Fun My Comic logos that everyone's making. Yes. That little 100%. trading card with a QR code on the back would be sick. Choice. That'd be great. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, let's see. So... We have uh, Brian with a comment, a street team pack, a T-shirt with 10 cards and three prints. There you go. Um, yeah. 
he says, uh, made to order. I will pick some this weekend. So there you go. Awesome. Thank you. And the uh, slacker says, yeah, QR in your comics and your website. And, yeah. uh, slacker we do have comments. a uh, fun, my comic full page ad that some, some creators have opted to put either on the back of their comic or in a spare page in their comic. So that's great. So that's, that's helping. Yeah. Very nice. Let's see. Uh, hey, Eric DeGuapo, what's up? Thank you for joining us tonight. All right, so we have just a minute or two left with Luke. I'm going to show off the website here. Let's check out what we've been talking about all night for those that are not familiar. So, yeah, fundmycomic.com. I'm going to put the link in the chat. The link is also in the description of the show. So is Luke's YouTube, so go sub there. And so is their uh, Fund My Comic Twitter. Go give them a follow as well. Uh, fundmycomic.com you can see that right there so the site is uh it looks exactly like you would honestly think it would look like for a site that says fund my comic it's very yeah. it's just like a comic book you know yeah. but when you scroll down it it's very nice in terms of uh being clean and easy to read and use and, and it, that's very important functionality and clarity not only is that very important in storytelling, it's also very important when you're doing something like this. And I think you guys nailed it with this. Uh, very, you. very good. Um, I, I want to tell you right now, especially in front of everybody too, I am definitely most, I'm very strongly considering putting a campaign on here within this year. But that's why I'm asking you about that quantity function, especially. I'm glad Mighty Joe brought that up. But I was, I was going to ask you about it as well. That is very important um, for us, especially at Alterna. We have so many different issues, I so bet, many different yeah. things to back multiples of. We always get people that are backing and, and ordering multiples. They want a signed copy, and they also want a reader, and they want one that's you know just to have and, and that, that all that kind of stuff so it's very important that we get a quantity option on there which was why we brought it to our own site as well um, as opposed to indiegogo i love the the idea of the add to cart system it makes it very clear and easy to use for everybody and then you can adjust the quantity nice and then we could do that um, so i absolutely am strongly considering putting a campaign on here and depending when you do get that quantity option up there if you get it up there this year we'll put a campaign up this year yeah. Um, but yeah th this looks great so if you guys haven't checked it out yet there's a bunch of different campaigns on here i know you have to be relatively impartial <laughs> with these campaigns is I there do, yeah. are there any that you'd like to give a shout out or you just want to say check them all out uh well I really would like to see. So there's a race for 10K on the platform. People can aggregate their totals from other from other sites. And so um, we just added a, a, a marker on those. So when you visit the campaigns, it'll show if they've raised their totals somewhere else. But right now, Ariel, uh, AR13L, the little Merc made, would really love to be the the first one to make the 10K there. I think that uh, Bronze Star is probably going to beat him. I, I do, uh, but uh, Pixel Trader has been in the behind the scenes helping us from the from the beginning of this thing, and so he was running his first campaign. I would love to see them get a little more love tonight, uh, if at all possible, and uh, I think they deserve it um, a lot. So, then, and then I have a campaign on there. This, the whole reason I started this is because I wanted to make comic books and be left the hell alone. And I haven't had time to do either <laughs> one lately. You and me both. It never works <laughs> yeah, out that way. way. Yeah. Yeah. I started this to run my campaign, and it's like got no traction at all. Oh, Where's your campaign? Let's give that it's, a shot. It's down, at the, it's down a little further. It, it's, it hasn't been getting much love lately. It's uh, a little, no, I guess further up. I think it's still on the list. There it is. Um all the way to the, uh, it's the I... hybrids one right there. Oh, there it's it is. got the books and the little devil chibi. That oh, one, right. yeah, you're, you're right so, over it. So hybrids double feature here. Yeah. Uh, go check that out. This is Luke's campaign. Give it some love on uh, funmycomic.com. Mm -hmm. A little bit of love. Uh, I do want to ask one thing, and I know Sl uh, Slacker had mentioned this as well, uh, but this wasn't what I wanted to comment on. Um, but says that Luke, that left and right side of the website looks empty. Um, yeah, it's it's a responsive site, 
So um, that's what I figured. Yeah. So it's a responsive site. It works really well on mobile. About sixty percent of our backers come from mobile, so it's kind of geared more towards that, mm. and um, and to keep it clean. Uh, we are working on some CSS stuff that we're going to do. We're going to change up a few things on the site. Um, buttons, I want to change up the shapes and looks of the buttons and stuff that we have on there. And so we're working on all those things slowly. Uh, we'll fill it in eventually. Right now, it's functionality. Functionality is our goal. So that's what we're what we're trying to accomplish. And uh, so, yeah, if you have suggestions, I think Vaughn... Um, he is working on some uh, kind of design elements for us. He's he's running a couple of ideas, oh, kind of through his idea mill, mill and he's going to send them over. So we'll see what he comes up with. So with this site, um, is it is it active in terms of like Kickstarter when you go there and you back and it updates in real time with the totals, or is it like Indiegogo where you have to refresh? It's it's the pink site. You have to refresh. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to make it more active. It, but, that's uh, fine because I mean, honestly, on uh, even though yeah, it'd be great if it's active on on the Alterna site. I have to go in there and manually update the totals and see who's backed, what the backers are. There's no coding yeah. on the site that enables us to link it up because especially yeah. when we have a campaign, it's going to register every single sale, and they yeah. don't contribute necessarily to the total. So I have to make sure it, and and vet what actually goes in there and doesn't. Yeah. Um, otherwise, yeah, it gets complicated. Uh, but I, I you know, this you makes it a little bit easier. Yeah, yeah. With our well, <laughs> well, see, this is what's great, and Brian knows me. Brian is a is a staunch Alterna supporter, big time, big time supporter of Alterna indie comics in general. He knows me. I think he understands what I'm getting at. He goes, Pete, a Halloween campaign on Fund My Comic with an exclusive shirt. Um, I would like an exclusive shirt. That'd be kind of cool. But I was thinking about bringing Alterna Ween. To fund I love my Alternaween. You know, um, you inspired me with Alternaween. Oh, really? I, I give out Arrow Comics. Um, I was Fantastic. a part of this weird debacle. And so we have a whole bunch of extra copies of our first issues that were made up. So I give out Arrow Comics for Halloween. I, I, I'm the comic book house. That's great, man. Yeah, I was I was thinking about Alterna Ween, and uh, it's a very simple campaign. It would just be bundles of comics at a at a massive discount to use as trick or treats, and people would buy them. Let's mm -hmm. say, and this is this would be rough pricing. You'd buy twenty five comics for like fifteen dollars or something, and you can give those out as trick or treats, and you would get a tote bag, an Alterna Ween tote bag, and and usually some other fun Halloween related stuff. Uh, but I was really thinking about that, of gearing that towards a campaign on here to test the waters, try it out, and see how that went. And if I did that, I would probably launch it around August. This way we have it enough time to fulfill the campaign, get everything to everyone in time for Halloween. Um, do you think that you would have that quantity option up? Because people, that would be perfect with yeah, the quantity option because people not purchase multiple sure. bundles. We need the quantity option for our second website for our, our Iron Age website. And so we're looking at moving that up in the list of things to have done. <laughs> so um, I will know when we might be able to have that done. Maybe early next week I'll have, I'll have an answer on when that's gonna happen. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it is a function that I need for my other site as well. Yeah. Because we're gonna be doing more direct retail and we need the quantity button because, yeah. you know, we're going to be doing bundles to stores. And so they're going to be able to buy bundles of five. So <laughs> it'd be nice go. if they could, you know, choose how many bundles they want. So, yeah, don't rush it on, you know, just for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but like that's it, it's, in, like the, it's said, in the works man yeah give me a tap on the shoulder about that i would love yeah. to do that if not this year um definitely next year or we'll figure out something to do something with the holidays and and for this year uh, depending when you have that option up there can they um, do that on uh indiegogo We've done it before on Indiegogo, and how I would do it would generally have been, um, and, and I haven't done it past two of the Alterna Weens on Indiegogo. Other than that, we have Indiegogo. Um, we have Alterna Ween on the Alterna site every year now, and people can go on there, okay. pick the bundles they want. They're separated from All Age, an All Ages bundle, which is appropriate for kids, and then mm -hmm. a mixed bundle that has a young adult 
and all ages and then a bundle that's mature young adult and all ages so if you want some of the comics for yourself or if you get a bunch of teenagers that come along and they're like what it's a hoodie it's a costume uh like a bunch of teenagers are you you know usually known to do uh you know i'm I'm here give me candy you know uh it's like you got five o'clock shadow young man uh (laughs) but uh we get those bundles in there too for people that want to do that Nice. Uh, so they're usually separated like that and people will purchase multiples um, that's why it would have been it'd be really great if we could do that this year and uh and have alternative we not fund my comic but yeah keep, o- me, august, keep right me updated here. yeah i would need it in august because even though obviously halloween is the 31st i want everyone to have their stuff in time for the 31st if not a little bit before that because sometimes people although I, it doesn't drive well with me but Sometimes people do the Saturday before or whatever it may be. And I'm like, man, Halloween's yeah. the day. That's how I we feel. Were, <laughs> we were really hoping not to make any changes to the uh, shopping cart for a few months. Just because whenever we write new code, we it, I know. like for yeah. like a week, week and a half, we have glitches we have to fix. You know, it's like, oh, crap. Now international shipping is acting weird. Or, yep. Oh, the coupon codes aren't working right. Or... You know, like the last one, it was like, we have, um, you have the ability to do um, uh, attributes. So if like you wanted to add cover options or signed, not signed on, on the cover, you could do that. And, and so we have an attribute and those are supposed to be required. And we found out that people were not picking covers. And so the, we're like, well, why weren't they, why didn't they pick the cover? First off, why didn't they pick the cover? And second off, why did it allow it to go through without the attribute being chosen? Hmm. And so we had to research it and figure out what it was. And it stemmed all the way back to the shopping cart. And it took like four weeks, four or five weeks for someone to not choose an attribute. Like to not pick the cover that they were actually trying to back when there was multiple choice. Wow. So it took us like four weeks to find the glitch because nobody had messed up. (laughs) And so it was pretty interesting. It's like, okay, well that's, but we got that fixed. So that's going, that was kind of the last, last thing with that. So, so yeah, it's on the docket, but now see, now there's two things that means that we need the, the quantity, button, not just my thing. Now it's my thing and your thing and everybody else's thing. I'm I'm sure there's a lot of creators out there and then especially backers who would love to see a a feature like that, but I totally get you. Um, And I don't want to add more to your plate than is already, uh, is already there, but fun. My comic looks great. I definitely want to get a campaign up on there. Um, Whether or not it's this year or next, we'll see. Uh, But yeah, it, it would be great if it worked out. If not, you know, don't worry about it. There's, there's always, there's always the future. Uh, but yeah, everybody go check this out. There's a lot of great projects on here. It's a very, it looks like it's a very easy to use site. And Luke has, has, has been so accommodating and I can't imagine that him and his team wouldn't be accommodating with any of the questions you guys have, whether you're a potential backer, a backer or a project creator. Um, but thank you so much, Luke, for joining me tonight. And uh, I agree. Yeah, Brian says back hybrids. Yeah, go back hybrids. Check it out. That's Luke's book. It's on his site on fundmycomic.com. It's right there in the link too. I'll add that link to the show as well when we're done. And uh, everybody, thank you so much for all your questions tonight. Thank you for joining me and Luke. And uh, Luke, it was great having you on. And I'm looking forward to talking to you more about this in the future. Uh, Is there anything you want to say before you go? Uh, well, I, I kind of sign off all the time with this, you know, there's a lot of people tearing things down. It's a lot easier to tear down than it is to build up, try building something up, make the world a little bit better for somebody, leave the wood pile a little bit higher than you found it and buy more comics. Beautiful. I, I couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. Have a wonderful evening. I'll be back again tomorrow night with Rob Hunter at nine o'clock Eastern for another episode of comic book radio i'll be talking to him about not just his project but a bunch of other things too so everybody take it easy see you tomorrow night and be well read comics and everything else luke said because it's basically what i would have said (laughs) but luke said it better everyone take it easy and uh, have a great night